Today's agenda, let's go have some fun. Okay guys, we made it out to our flying field. It's bright. There's a little bit of wind. You can see these things. Uh, I want to go up to that mountain right there. It's called Eagle Mountain. I just want to go cruise up there and uh, goof off, have a good time. But we're going to get ready, get airborne, and make our way that way. Ooh, is the wet grass wet? Oh, ho, ho, ho. we got wet grass. Oh my gosh, I gotta pee again. Boom. Oh my gosh, I forgot to lay the lines out. Great. Well, that was quite the launch. <laughs> a 4 XS and no wind is pretty spicy if I say so myself. Now, I want to make my way up to that mountain, so I will check in on you with you guys as we get closer. Okay. Well, that was nasty. All of a sudden, I don't think I'm moving forward. I ain't moving. Neither is Jordan. All right, all right, abort mission. Time to come down. Okay, okay, okay. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, we're going down. We're coming back down to Earth. Woo-wee. Yeah. Okay, much, much smoother down here. But whenever we hit, man, that was bumpy. That was really bumpy. So it's much warmer up there. It's much cooler down here. I'm taking it that we're in a cold front down here. That was a warm front up there. And going between the layers was bumpy as bumpy gets. That was pretty gnarly, my guy. That was pretty gnarly. Bumps aren't that big of a deal, but I prefer not. <laughs> I don't really love bumps. Now let me explain the water effect. Wind typically gets bumpy because of changing altitude and objects in the way. Like if I look in that direction, there's a mountain and there's cliffs and there's up and down and little ridges. So as wind goes through that, it gets all bumpy and twirly and all messy. Yeah, so air gets all bumpy coming through land. Like if I look this way, although there isn't a giant mountain, there's a lot of houses and things for the wind to hit and tumble through. But if I look this way, it's pretty smooth for quite a while which is the lake effect. As the air moves past the lake, it becomes very smooth because there isn't anything for it to hit and tumble through and around, other than the occasional wave, but you know what I mean. So, the bigger the lake, the bigger the lake effect. The ocean gives the biggest lake effect because it actually produces lots of wind from the ocean. There is nothing for hundreds of miles in the oceans. You know what I'm saying. 
lakes like this, Utah Lake, that are massive. This gives a pretty good lake effect during the you know daytime. It's pretty smooth over the water, pretty bumpy over land. Uh, you know, Salt Lake here in Utah is even bigger. That produces an even better lake effect. It's very similar to the ocean. It's very smooth all the time when the water air comes from the lake, which is pretty often because it's big enough. It also produces wind. This air heat. Land heats up slower and in different spots faster than other spots versus the water, which heats up all at the same time equally, which produces a very consistent wind, which is what the ocean gives. The ocean heats up equally all across it, and that's why you get nice wind blowing from the ocean. A big lake like this can do the same thing, but it has a lot of outside variables. If it's a bigger lake like Salt Lake, well, it's better at it. Salt Lake typically produces pretty smooth wind all the time. Utah Lake, not really, but we get nice lake effect here, which is meaning we can fly all the time and it's pretty smooth. Here we go. Whoa, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. This thing's pretty funky. I don't really know what it was for. I assume it was a farmer's thing. But I think it's pretty cool. Oh, it's a little bumpy down here. All right, okay. It's just going to be a bumpy flight. Okay, guys. I'm going to make a quick video about how you weight shift a flat top. A lot of people say, there's no weight shift on a flat top. That's some bull crap. That's some bull crap. Let me tell you. The flat top weight shifts extremely well because these are 22 inches apart. They are wide. I got a lot of room in here to wiggle and shake and bake. Now, weight shift. That basically means lowering one riser, raising the other riser, or loading one riser more than the other. So, on the flat top, two weight shift. I hook this comfort bar with my arm, or this one. We'll start with this one. I grab it, I pull my weight over. Boom! Look at that. Initiate a huge turn. I wait to even out, right? Grab this one. Whoa! Big weight shift turn, right? Now I go back. Whoa! We're doing wing overs with weight shift, baby. Oh, yeah. No handed. Oh, yeah, baby. Look at that, huh? Did you weight shift no handed? Do wing overs with them? That's what I thought. Woo! Yeah, that bad boy weight shifts a lot. It's all about moving your weight, your butt, your weight in your butt cheeks. Hey, Tyler's here. It's all about weight distribution. Where do you put the weight? I am going to stick it all over here. That will then turn me this way. Here comes Jordan. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. That was pretty slick, except it was ridiculously bumpy. High up, it was crazy bumpy, and then you go down low, and it was pretty chill. Yeah, I think this was a cold front. Up here is a high, and so going between the two, yeah, we it went up, and we're like, woo! I, it got warmer as we went up, so I figured it, it was a high, a hot front up there. Hey, even a short flight like that is nothing but a good time. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next video. If you want to learn how to fly these aircrafts, go to flyflattop.com. It's the hair that does it for me. Mine? Yeah. What's wrong with my hair? It's beautiful. It's amazing. <laughs>